everyone welcome to another rubber dance design team tutorial and once again I'm playing with the stamps called hot 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 lots of lovely chili peppers and lots of lovely spicy sayings I've really had great fun working with this set and uh, this is um, one of four tutorials that I've created for the design team this card is called tangled chili peppers and I'm going to be showing you how to make this fun card which was inspired by a tag that I made I decided to use my chili stamp outline and do a little bit of zen tangling and I thought it made a real fun tag and I wanted to create a card using this same technique so I'm going to be showing you how to make this card using a little bit of zen tangle or doodle whichever you like to call it and I'm going to show you exactly how I made it. As usual at the end of this video you'll be able to click on a link and visit my blog for the full cutting guide and of course that all important link to rubberdance.com where you can get your fun chili stamps and take a look at everything else they've got on offer over there. So the card itself is a black card and it measures 8 inches by 8 inches which is 20.5 centimetres square and then it is scored and folded in half at 4 inches or if you're working in centimetres 10.25 centimetres and I'm really hoping that the point 0.25 is okay for the people working in centimetres. I'm not sure, I'm just doing my best to get the equivalent in centimetres because I'm used to working in inches. Next thing you'll need is two pieces of white cardstock that measure seven and three quarter inches by three and three quarter inches, which leaves a nice black um, frame around the white cardstock, and one will be used on the inside and one on the outside. In centimetres that's 9.5 centimetres by 19.75 centimetres. Then we need some little squares and we're starting out with the black squares and they measure one and three quarter inches each and we need four of them in total and that's 4.5 centimetres and then we need four white squares and they measure one and five eighths of an inch square or four centimetres square. So we're going to start out by just joining these little white squares on top of a corresponding black square and you just want to sit them centrally on the little black frame and they're going to be the little display pieces that our Zentangled chilies are going to sit on top of. So I'm using glue to do this but you could use double sided tape if you want to. You may wonder why I choose to use PVA glue to put my cards together. Um, more often than not my cards are around just for a little bit longer than perhaps yours might be if you're giving them away for a special occasion and I just like to make sure that everything stays together. Sometimes uh, double sided tape depending on the kind you get can um, just dry out a little bit and be a little bit more likely to peel away so I just want to be doubly safe so I'm using PVA glue. I am going to stick to chilli colours for this card and I'm going to be using my distress inks. I'm just having a little bit of a play to see which chilli colours that I've got in my distress ink. So I'm using mustard seed, festive berries, mowed lawn and I think I need a little bit of orange in there and I'm going to go with my wild honey distress ink. Just nipped out of the room as you can tell by the long pause and I'm back. <laughs> Something else that you're going to need are um, a black archival ink pad and some fine line black pens. And to colour in your chilies, you're going to use the same sort of colours as you've picked for your distress ink. So I've just picked out four pro markers that I'm going to use to match up to my um, distress ink colours. Now the reason that you're using pro markers or any kind of alcohol based marker to colour in the detail on your Zentangled chilies is that if you use a water based ink if you uh, don't fix it then you'll find that the glossy accents we're going to use will make the colour bleed afterwards so I'm just going to tell you the colours of these pro markers in case you need to know. To match the mustard seed I've picked tulip yellow, to match the green I've picked leaf green, to match the orange I've picked honeycomb and to match the red I've picked cardinal red. So I'm getting ready to show you this ink blended background just by loading up my ink blending tools with their right colour of um, foam so that I've got one for each colour. You could equally just keep using the same tool and just change that little piece of foam at the bottom to the colour that you're going to be using next or you could be using individual little pieces of foam like makeup sponges, they would work just as well to blend your inks or you could use your brushes if you want to uh, use them to blend the ink colours together. So my top tips for this are to make sure you're working on a messy mat that helps you blend the ink on to your um, piece of cardstock. That you start by uh, 
placing your little ink blending tool slightly off your card and then twirling it as if you're polishing onto your piece of cardstock. And my next tip is to make sure that you've got a little piece of scrap paper handy so that as your uh, inks fill up your piece of card, you're not gonna be putting fingerprints onto your inks. Uh, distress inks do work best for this method because they have got a longer drying time and they allow you to blend them. Try not to do what I just did, which was uh, drop my ink blending tool straight onto the card or you will get slight marks from the edges of the blending tool. So I'm just swirling the colours in, ra in random or in a random fashion around my cardstock and just gradually filling up the entire piece of white cardstock with colour. And I think you'll agree that these are a lovely selection of colours and they give a real uh, sort of hot fiesta feel to this blended background. So I'm coming in with the mode lawn and just filling up some of the gaps that I've got remaining. I'm trying to keep a balance between the colours. I don't want too much of one colour and not enough of the other. And I just want them to stay quite blended. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time just rubbing over the colours and making sure that they blend nicely together. So I know not many of us polish tables or wood furniture anymore but that's the kind of motion that you'll be using a swirling motion as if you've got a duster in your hand and you're giving a table a good polish and each time you need a little bit more ink just swirl it onto your distress ink pad and then carry on blending across your piece of white cardstock I just keep looking and seeing which colour it's easier to blend with. Sometimes it's easier to blend with the lighter colours. Uh, as you can see from the blend in between the green and the red, they're two quite strong colours. You're never going to get a perfect blend, but you just want to get as soft an edge as you can. And I'm coming back in with some of the lighter colours just to help with the blending as I finish off filling up this piece of cardstock. I think I'm happy with that and I'm going to move on to the next step. I've had a quick look at my card. I've moved my distress inks out of the way and I'm stamping with a range of black archival ink and I'm using four phrases. I think that's what I've identified so far, but I'll shout out if I spot another one. Just chill in, chill out, spicy and spice it up. And if you start at one corner and then mix your stamps around, and turn them around so that they are stamped randomly right across the front of your cardstock. By stamping from one area, I'm starting out at my bottom right hand corner and going across to the left hand side. It means that you won't leave yourself with a gap that you haven't got a stamp uh, the right size for. So I've got my little spicy stamp should I uh, get a little bit stuck and have a small space because that's my smallest stamp so I'm definitely using that one as a bit of a filler so I just want to go right across the card uh, stamping little spicy phrases as I go. If you do make a mistake just as I did in stamping one of them upside down it doesn't really matter but uh, you could stamp the odd one from that point onwards upside down and it means that it will make it look like you meant to do it that way. <laughs> So just filling up those last little areas and this is where that little stamp spicy comes in really handy. And as soon as you've finished stamping that lovely background you can join it to the front of your black card. So again I'm using glue but you can use double sided tape. And you just want it positioned centrally on the front of your card and you can see what a lovely background this makes. So as I began to make a um, inner, a matching inner for this card, I wanted to make 
an area of that same pattern on the top and the bottom, leaving an area of white across the middle of this cardstock so that uh, you could stamp a sentiment or you can add uh, obviously the greeting when you send it to the person that you want to give it to. And it was at this point I thought actually I'm going to end up with a little bit of a messy edge if I'm not careful uh, blending all these colours together. So I decided to use my little piece of paper that I'm using for um, to keep my fingerprints off of the cardstock as a mask. So I always like to leave some of these little decisions that happen along the way into my videos because it just shows you that there's there is no right or wrong. Sometimes you start out in one direction and you suddenly think, well, that's not working then. And you really shouldn't be afraid to change your mind. So I uh, went along uh, with this for a little while and then I thought, no, I'm not happy with that edge. So uh, that's when I changed my mind. And I'm going to show you what I did. So I'm going to use my piece of scrap paper as a mask. So I'm positioning it about an inch from the top of what will be the insert of my card and then I'm going to carry on blending those colours right over that little piece of scrap paper and that way I'll get a lovely neat edge and I will show you, I'm going to fast forward it so you can see how I get on. So I'm just making sure that I keep a firm pressure along that front edge of the paper and I am just being a little tiny bit careful not to catch it too much with my um, blending foam so I'm just slightly putting the pressure on the back of the blending tool so that that front edge doesn't catch and you can see it makes a lovely smooth edge. Now on the bottom edge of the cardstock I'm just going a little bit thicker so probably about an inch and a half and then just following the little splodges that I'd already started with and blending them right across the bottom of the cardstock. And it makes a lovely centre panel ready to stamp your greeting and to write the um, message to the person that you'll be sending the card to. So I'm keeping the mask in place and then I'm coming back in with those little word stamps and stamping them in a random fashion and by keeping the mask there all my stamping will be in the correct area and not encroaching on the centre of the card. Again, I'm using my black archival ink. Moving to the other side and repeating the process. Just make sure that that card lines right up against the edge of the blended colors that you've already put down. You can see we've now got a lovely matching inner for the centre of our card and it's finished so we can attach it again using PVA glue or double sided tape. Then you're just going to centre it as you did with the front of the card. Another thing with the glue, it does give you a little bit of leeway just to push or pull the card if you don't quite get it straight or uh, in the centre. So we've got to the front and the inside section finished and it, we're now ready to work on our lovely tangled chilies. So I'm using the, I would call it the medium chilli. It's not the biggest, it's the next one down and it's the outline stamp. I'm using black archival ink and uh, after the little uh, error on the first one, I'm stamping out four lovely chilies ready to tangle. 
Now some people may call this doodling, some people may call this zentangling, uh, but either way we're just creating little patterns with a fine black pen, I'm just zooming in so you can see the patterns that I'll be using, and I want you, whatever you choose to do, to use patterns that you can colour in. So I'm starting out with a zigzag line and I'm just following it all the way down the chilli and I will be able to colour some of these in some of the colours of Pro Markers. Um, so I want my chilies to be all different combinations of the main four colours with a little bit of white card showing in the pattern. So whichever patterns you choose to use, if you are a Zentangler and you've got some lovely patterns up your sleeve, then feel free to uh, decorate the chilies however you wish. But as I said, bear in mind that you want to be able to colour some of these patterns in. So for my second chili, I'm going to create a checkerboard effect. So I'm doing a vertical line sort of following the length of the chili, and then my horizontal line is coming around as if it's following the uh, shape of the chili, but crossing the original lines to form a checkerboard grid. And then I'm coming back in with a black pen and colouring them in exactly like you would a checkers or drafts board or a chess board. <laughs> so I'm just colouring in every other square. Something else to think about when you are doing this is to just make sure that these pens or the pens that you're using for the black work on your chilies is compatible with the markers that you've chosen to use to add the colour to the pattern. So I've tested that my pro markers don't react with these black uh, pens and so I'm good to go. Uh, I know that they're not going to bleed into one another when I add the colour so it's definitely worth checking that out before you make a mistake especially when you take a fair bit of time creating a pattern on each of your chilies. So my next one is quite simple I'm just doing a random set of large circles and then filling in with some tiny circles. Just having a little bit of a think what I'm going to do on my fourth and final chilli. And I decided to do a proper Zentangle pattern this time. So this Zentangle pattern is called Bales and it's quite an easy one to do. It starts out by creating a grid exactly like you do on the checkerboard. So vertical lines first, but this time you can see I'm spacing them further apart. And then I'm coming across with a horizontal line. So I formed a grid. And then I'm going to come back in, I'm going to draw slight arched lines following or encapsulating each of those vertical lines. So a little curved line on each side of the lines that form the grid. And if you follow all the way down your vertical lines first, they start to look like little petals. And when you do the same thing, so I'm just finishing off my vertical lines, when you do the same two little arches on either side of the horizontal line, you will see what I mean about them forming little petals because they begin to look like a little basket weave of flowers. So I'm just working on all those horizontal lines, a little arch at the top and the bottom, and then I'm filling in or just drawing a little spot or dot in the centre of each of the white areas that remain once I've created my little flower pattern. If you wanted to, you could really leave your chilies black and white, but uh, I'm opting to use my Pro Markers to add a little bit of colour. So I'm going in on all those little tiny dots on the spotted chilli with my orange marker pen. And it's just a case of mixing and matching your colours and then I'm colouring in all of the large spots with my green pen and then I'm going to leave the rest of the chilli white. I think it's nice just to get a balance of or a mixture of colours across your chilies. Um, this chilli will have all of the colours because it's got all of the stripes it's easy to use a little bit of each colour and I'm leaving one of the stripes white so I've got four colours so I'm leaving four stripes in between each of the green ones which will allow me to have one of the stripes white. So colouring in with the green, then the red, and this is quite a nice 
uh, technique to use with these stamps. There is a larger version of this chili, so that would be fab to do uh, slightly more intricate patterns on, and I'm sure you can come up with a card design that uh, uses this one, uses the large chili and uh, displays the lovely zentangling that you could do on it. And then finishing off the pattern by adding an orange zigzag stripe. So you can see my chilies are all starting to mix and match. The checkerboard one's a little bit diff more difficult to add colour to, but I'm going to be using my red pro marker and I'm going to be colouring every other white square. So I'm leaving it, it almost looks like I've created a diagonal stripe of white squares and a diagonal stripe of red squares. And then for my final pattern, I've decided to use the yellow on the little flower shapes. And then I'm going to come back in with my orange pen to fill in those segments in between. So this is the only chili that hasn't got any white space left once I've finished colouring it in. So once all your lovely chilies are then tangled, tangled, doodled and coloured in, then you can get out your glossy accents and give them a little bit of shine. Now for those of you that don't know what Glossy Accents is, it's a product by Ranger and it adds a lovely enamelled effect to anything that you add it to. So I'm just flooding the shape of the of the chilli with the Glossy Accents. And it's a bit difficult to tell here but I'm using the actual uh, nozzle of the Glossy Accents just to push this varnish around and by keeping the nozzle immersed in the actual varnish it means that you don't get any bubbles as you apply it to your chili so I'm just making sure that the glossy accents remains within the border of the chili stamp and that way I can cut out my chili once this lovely uh, glossy surface is dry Glossy accents does take a little while to dry a good few hours has gone by since uh, the last part of this video and now I'm just taking my scissors and cutting around the outside of the chilli and the glossy accents have given each of my chilies a lovely sheen and you can see that on camera as I move the chilies around as I cut them out. So my fourth and final chilli now we're ready to add them to our card and they're going to sit on each of those little squares and again you're going to keep everything quite random so position them on your card how you like them and this time I'm using a foam tape just to attach each of the squares to the card so I'm just kind of roughly keeping them in place as I work across the card just to give me an idea of where I'm going and if you keep your foam tape just to the uh, slightly away from the edges of your little squares it means that you'll be over you'll be able to overlap them slightly which is what you want you want to create a little tile effect across the front of your card And then once all your little square frames are in place then you can just take a pencil or a pen or something similar just slightly round your chilies just to give them a little bit of shape and then I'm using thin strips of foam tape just to attach my chilies to each of the individual squares.
And then again, I'm just having a dry run of how I'm going to lay out the chilies and then remove the tape and stick them in place. And look how lovely and shiny they look. And just those losing those white squares as frames just picks them out from the from the lovely, bright and vibrant background of this card. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that I've given you lots of ideas for using these fabulous stamps. I really enjoyed making my lovely tangled chilies and this gorgeous blended background. And I hope that you can use some of these techniques on your cards or go across to rubberdance.com and purchase these stamps for yourself and give it a go. So as usual, stay tuned to the end of the video for links to other projects that you might like to take a look at, as well as the link to my blog where you can get the cutting guide for this card, as well as the links back to rubberdance.com. So if you've enjoyed this tutorial and you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out any of the creativity on this YouTube channel. If you already subscribe, don't forget to hit the like button, the share button and share the creativity. Until next time, thank you for watching.